Russia's war on Ukraine, a top Ukrainian official is confirming today there is a new attempt this hour to reach the civilians who are still trapped in the Mariupol steelworks. But reports of heavy fighting may complicate that rescue attempt again. This is recent video of the battle for the complex from journalists embedded with pro-Russian forces. In its latest update, the UK Ministry of Defense says the fighting is continuing for a second day. Now, this is video posted online yesterday showing pro-Russian forces bombarding the steel mill. It's from the Azov Regiment, now part of Ukraine's National Guard, but with origins as a far-right group. It's among the last Ukrainian defenders in Mariupol. We're going to take you to Lviv for our Ukraine coverage this morning. Ellen Morrow, part of our CBC News team, and she is at the city's central train station. Going to show us around there in just a moment. But I do want to begin with you, Ellen, with what we know about this rescue operation set to go, we hear, in Mariupol today. That's right, Heather. Ukrainian officials have said today there is yet another attempt ongoing to try to get civilians out of the horrible underground bunkers they've been stuck in for weeks, if not months, at this point. The UN and the uh, International Committee of the Red Cross have also confirmed that there is another attempt happening. We heard from the UN Special Envoy for Ukraine yesterday saying a convoy of buses was due to arrive at the plant this morning, again, trying to rescue civilians but it is really hard to know you know hour by hour exactly what is happening there the UN and the Red Cross have both previously said they are going to be very tight-lipped about the amount of information they make public because they're both concerned those agencies of jeopardizing any uh, any operations what we can say is that there has been renewed fierce fighting at the plant in recent days yesterday Ukrainian forces in the factory said there was a heavy battle going Going on. Russia denied that, but we also heard from the UK Ministry of Defense this morning saying Russia has continued to attack the Azovstal plant uh, in an effort to gain control of all of Mariupol. So really, really horrible conditions there, Heather. We heard from the mayor of Mariupol a few days ago saying that some 200 people still remain stuck in that sprawling bunker network underneath the factory. They've been under near constant bombardment for weeks, and he says that number includes up to 30 children. Ellen, I mentioned the railway. You have seen in person just how vital Ukraine's railway is in this war. It's a means to get people to safety. It's a crucial supply line. But it's also been coming under increasing attack by the Russians. So what are you seeing there at that central station today? Well, Heather, as you said, we are at the main train station in Lviv, which has been such a crucial hub throughout this crisis. And this morning, there are dozens, if not hundreds of people here who fled from the east of this country. We'll give you a look at what's happening here. There's multiple stands like this one where people are coming to get uh, hot coffee, a little bit of food, whatever they can. There are dozens of people here in lines like this one. We'll just hook around a little bit to show you the crowd here. There are young, there are elderly people here just trying to get what they can before they go on to the next stop in their journey, wherever that may be. A lot of people here don't really have a sense of where that might be. They've been forced to flee their homes because of this brutal invasion. We've been talking to people uh, here this morning, two women from Sloviansk in the east. And, you know, everyone you talk to, Heather, is really just a few seconds away from breaking down in tears because of the tragedy of all they lost. We spoke to a family here, a mother with her four daughters and their little puppy. They were about to board a bus to Poland, but you know, just horrific conditions. They had to flee because their town was under constant shelling. They feared for their lives. So they take a bus or they take those crucial railway networks that have come under uh, increasing Russian missile attacks as Russia tries to block the supply of weapons to the east. They get here to Lviv, and this is where, this is where they are greeted. There are lots of, uh, of NGOs working here, Ukrainian volunteers here, trying to give these people the best, you know, greeting in the West that they can. But there is so much uncertainty, Heather, so much trauma, and so much pain. Ellen, thank you for all of that. Really appreciate it. Ellen Morrow leading our coverage from Lviv.